Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion Place of Binding of Isaac Atterbirth Plus. No, 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 Yes, okay, so the first one was the host, not Family Man. I'm ready. We did Waka Waka last time. No problems. One RCG. Woes. My seed is like woes. My run is like... Dude, I have not thought of that song in about 32,000 years. Who sings that? It's not Ciara. My is like woe. My love is like woe. Not my poop is like water. <laughs> Google, what's wrong with you? Uh, it's Maya. Oh. Maya's a interesting artist. First off, let me talk about this run. You know? We got Spider Baby, Keskase, fa 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 fa. And then. Like, that's really second tier. The mulligan, which we start with, is also amazing. Any run that starts with a mulligan, you don't need an item room to win this game. You got nothing to worry about. I don't think I could name a single Maya song, except now for My Love Is Like Woe. But I can name two collaborations she's done. Obviously, there's, uh, you know, Lady Marmalade, very famous song. That's right, it's Maya. It is Maya, right? Now I'm like, okay, it's pink. Lil' Kim. Moulin Rouge. She says that. It's pink. Lil' Kim. Christina Aguilera. And Maya. Pink, Lil' Kim, Christina Aguilera. Maya. Pink, Lil' Kim, Christina. Now I gotta go Lady Marmalade. Singers. Christina, Lil' Kim, Maya, and pink. Yeah, okay, got them all. So there's one, obviously. And then also, of course, there's her actual best song. Ghetto Superstar, that is what you are. Coming from a farm, reaching for the star. This is probably not the melody, but I'm singing the Weird Al version now. Okay. Isn't that, that's an embarrassment when you start to sing a, a real pop masterpiece and then slip into the Weird Al version halfway through. Either way. I don't know what she's done as a solo artist. I will tell you that in my opinion there is a solo female artist in the R&B genre who's very under-respected. Her name is Ciara. One Two Step, acceptable song. Oh, actual underappreciated uh, hip-hop, well, R&B classic. Highly recommended. It's got a nice vibe and atmosphere to it. I remember driving in my friend's uh, 1995 Chevy Blazer and uh, he wanted to listen to Green Day's American Idiot. I wanted to listen to Ciara's album. In hindsight, his choice has probably aged better, but that doesn't mean O's not a good song. So we're going to go like absolutely wild on this one. Probably should have stopped at the shop with one HP, because you never know. But we only have to go six rooms or alternatively get a battery charge, uh, and then we'll we'll probably be set forever. This seems like a real fast one, if things go right. I heard Ghetto Superstar on the radio for the first time uh, in like 15 years, a couple of months ago, and it really brought me back. It was like, there's one radio station in Vancouver, and well, I mean, there's like th hundreds of radio stations in Vancouver, but there's like a couple that I listen to, but one of them routinely pulls out these like absolute bangers that you've just forgotten about. They might as well call it like suppressed memory radio. It gets me every time. Like I already did the bit on it like three months ago, but um, I was driving one day and I just, they go, Wake up my airplane, wake up my airplane, my skin is bad. I'm like, dude, I haven't heard this song in forever. But yet somehow my brain has retained all the words. Thanks a lot, brain. It's not like I was using that, you know, storage space for something else. Or could have used that storage space for something else. Really appreciate it. That's my ideal radio station. It would only play two kinds of songs. Songs you remember loving and songs you don't remember loving. Like, you know what song doesn't come on the radio nearly as much as it deserves, given the quality of the song? At least here. Uh, the new Radicals, you get what you give. I know it's 17, well, actually, probably like 18 or 19 years old at this point. But uh, that's a genuine banger of a song. You hear it occasionally, but not that much. 
Every radio station, when they play a Third Eye Blind song, they play a, I wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. Nah. Play semi charm kind of life more, please. I beg you. Don't play Wonderwall. Play Don't Look Back in Anger. You know, don't play Take Me Out. Play, uh... I don't know. There's a variety of Franz Ferdinand songs. I'll say they call it the Darker the Madonna or something. Um, no, stop this. There's also like one radio station that almost exclusively plays '90s grunge music, and uh, I mean, why would you ever listen to any other radio station? Every single song is a banger from your youth. Like the coldest winter chill. Heaven beside you and hell with them. I don't know how they did that voice. It didn't have the kind of technology that allowed you to use that voice back then. It's like Axl Rose through a talk box. Anyway, we don't need it. It doesn't have to be a music episode. I'm just, you know, Bear asked me today on the NLSS, how do you come up with so much stuff to talk about during the show? And I told him it's, it's, it's just about never saying no to your brain. As long as your brain comes up with something to talk about, you indulge your brain, and you give it, like, uh, you know, at least two or three minutes to discuss and see if it works. That's how I'm able to talk so much. We also brought it up on the show today. I thought it was an interesting thought experiment. I, I was saying, if I quit doing... Oh, my God. If I quit doing a YouTube Twitch tomorrow, do you think... Let's say I live till I'm 80 years old. Uh, do you think that I would have spoken, if you took the audit of my life after I died, do you think that I would have spoken more from zero to 29 years old, my present age, than I would in the intervening 41 years from 29 to 80? Wait, does that work? 51 years, 29 to 80. Um, it's almost double the length of time, but realistically, like, if I ever leave Twitch and YouTube, I'm being real with you, there's one of two things that happens. I make an app that's worth, like, you know, enough money for me to never have to work again, or I'm gonna willfully take a job in, like, a basement where I don't have to talk to anybody. Not only have I, do have I talked too much for one lifetime as is, but, like, I have been exposed to the live, unadulterated, and unfiltered thoughts of people listening to me talk. And I think it has a very interesting effect on the human mind, you know? Like, everyone's comments are always so nice and reassuring that I've stopped worrying about, you know, anything ranging from my mental health to, oh, you sound sad today. Um, why do you get sick so often if your voice has, like, a slight crack in it or something? Like, you get the idea. Anyway, it's just, like, a really good thing for your self-esteem. So, I think I, after that I'm done and I can take a soul-crushing position, you know, in corporate bureaucracy somewhere. But the, the gist of the question was, like, do you think... Well, it really, the gist of the question, the spirit of the question is, how much more do you think like your average Twitch streamer or YouTuber talks compared to the average person that doesn't work in the field. And I'm, you know, deliberately, I guess, excluding professions that speak a lot. Teachers, teachers speak a lot. If you teach four, I mean, everybody's high school is set up differently, I guess. Our high school was, you had four 70 minute classes. So usually the way that that would work is that a teacher would talk for maybe half an hour and then there would be like a discussion for a few minutes and maybe after that you, you know, you write something down. You know, you do a worksheet or something like that or answer a short answer question, hand it in to get participation points, you get the idea. Um, and at, at my university now, uh, you know, the teachers, they usually lecture for like 90 minutes and then they're like, okay, here's a coding exercise for you to do for the last 90 minutes. So, I mean, it's still a lot of talking. If you do four of those a day, five days a week, you know, it's roughly 360... Well, they're not doing four three-hour classes a day. That, that's obviously absurd. Let's say they were doing three a day. It was 270 minutes. It's like four and a half hours of talking daily times five. That's a lot, honestly. 22 hours of speech a week. That's more than your average person, I gotta tell you. But if you work at, like... Let's say you work at an office. You're a writer. You know, I know we have people that watch this that write, or you, you know, you work in like media production, or you're a programmer, or something like that. You're an IT specialist. You work in data analysis, and you're listening to this right now. How much do you speak on a on a daily basis? 
Include your family. I'm not talking about time engaged in speech. I'm talking about the active time that you're actually speaking. This is not me complaining about my life being hard, by the way. You know, how much physical labor do I do on a daily basis? Actually, like, negative. <laughs> I don't know why I laughed about that. It made me sound like a little bit of a, an elitist. Anyway, the point is, uh, that's for the pros to handle. Fulfilling and gratifying work where you're adding to something in your community. Not for me. I, I manipulate information digitally. Anyway. Uh... Just be careful with the Undrowsy is really good. Are you a wizard? It's terrible though. Love this room. Ooh, Edmund, I love your room. Every room. You probably I was thinking back to like when I, you know, worked at an office job. I, I think I actively spoke for less than one hour of a day. Every day. You think that's fair? I speak seven hours a week? So, like, one day of work is about... Like, I might... And this is, again, not like, oh, check out how hard I hustle. It's more just like, here, my hustle is unique in that it uses a lot of vocal cord action. I think it's fair to suggest I probably speak seven times more than the average individual. I would, I would go so far as to say, like, you know, when, when I worked in an office job, I was... Uh, low on the totem pole and I was also unmarried and an only child who lived with uh, his parents so for the most part basically people are only like you know hey Ryan and be like, yeah and they'd be like hey have this on my desk by three days from now I know people like to say that you know have it on my desk by tomorrow and you know maybe in other professions that matter but usually they'd be like hey here's 15 minutes of work uh, have it to me by the end of the week and, uh, okay I mean I could have it to you in like half an hour if you want but I, I, I don't know. I, I guess I shouldn't give you the expectation that I can work that hard, or you might just keep giving me more work without compensating me. But regardless, I digress here. I think if you, you know, definitely now that I'm married, after I finish work, I engage in much more conversation because I don't live alone. So for the average, you know, office worker. I don't, I don't want to call it a normal job, but you know what I mean. Like, it has a, a relatively, you know, a standardized profession. Yeah, maybe you talk a couple hours a day at most, right? I don't know, man. Well, I was told there would be no mathematics involved in today's episode. As always, I, will, I know I'm going to catch some heat for using Diplopia so early. But in my defense, Diplopia rules, but largely if you grab it as early as possible. Now, with two battery babies, not as early as possible, I should say, but, if, you know, we use it to get, like, I don't know, 50 cents worth of items there. It's a pretty great value. If you have a better spacebar item and you ha have Diplopia show up, how else are you going to use it? This seems like the perfect, you know, way to get it done. What is this room? Stop. I don't want to even, like, attack these enemies until I uh, get my damage bonus. Don't talk to me until I've had my damage bonus. It's one of the rare challenge runs where, despite it being good, we actually might not be able to make it to boss rush. <laughs> it's very strange. Considering we started with the mulligan, but anyway. So yeah, I, I was gonna say, like, I think if I were to, you know, just magically, like, stop doing this job tomorrow. I've probably spoken more than half of the words that I would speak uh, in my entire life. Despite having lived for, you know, let's say a third of what you would expect my natural lifespan to be at this point. I'm not saying I'm going to live till I'm 87. That would be definitely on the upper end for men. Of course, I know who knows. I don't want to offend the Ray Kurzweil uh, acolytes out there that are like, well, maybe you live forever, but... You know, you never know. I'm just, I'm using it as a rough estimate. I could be dead at 30 for all. I could be dead before the video ends. Probably not, though. So, it's very weird to think about, to think... I, I, do you guys divide? I, I'm, I'm a divider. Not in the way that I, like, I break people up or anything like that, but... You know, I, I think about that. You know, when I worked at an office job in particular, I know I talk about that... A lot, you know, like Uncle Rico. Back when I was a uh, worked in an office, man, if they promoted me to CEO, we would have gone public. No, it's not like that. It's just you know my one connection to real life that I lean back on all the time. But 
Uh, you know, you show up at work at 8.30. Um, you know, you finish an hour of work, you go, okay, 12% of the day done. Another hour, okay, we're roughly a quarter done. Not only are we a quarter done, but we're halfway to lunch. One more done, 75% of the way to lunch, three-eighths of the way through the work. You get the idea, right? Um, I divided that up. I divided up, you know, okay, I finished a month of work at my summer job, a quarter of the way to being, you know, back in college. God, I hate this boss fight right now. I divide. So, you know, I think about that sometimes, and it really messes you up, especially, when, you know, when you're like, you know, 15. You're like, I got 85% of my life left. I'm not old, but I'm old enough to be like, dude, there's like... Ooh, thank you for this. Free the old to devil, although it... Oh, that we have to. You're not going to love it, and I understand why. But, dude, our damage went down when we picked up uh, experimental treatment. We have to take it. Now, it's, when you start to come across these milestones, like, man... I wonder if I've spoken more than half of the words that I would speak over the course of the rest of my life. Now, it might not be true right now, because keep in mind, you know, I, I don't know, I could be doing this job for the next 30 years. I would love to. I was very happy to see, by the way, I like to promote positive stuff in the community. I streamed, uh, when Kay was away, there was a week in which, basically by accident, I streamed seven days in a row, um, including having the YouTube stuff done at the same time. But... <laughs> Not that I'm bragging. Um, somebody posted on the subreddit and was like, Hey, NL streamed every single day this week. That's that's cool and like probably the first time that's ever happened. Um, and then the top comment was like, I think what we take from this is that, you know, NL is not BSing when he says that he loves streaming. And I, I that's true. I love recording for YouTube as well. Like if you watch on YouTube and you only and you don't watch on Twitch, please don't be offended like, oh NL he hates doing the YouTube stuff. That's a chore. And the Twitch stuff is his real passion. No. The speech and the talking is the real passion. And the creation of, like, what I hope is an entertaining product. That's the real passion. Twitch is just easier, if I'm being honest. Because you have people in the chat watching. Like, so they, you know, whenever you have something you want to talk about, you just look to chat and then you go... Hey, let's pull something from here. Pose a question to chat and be like, hey, if you had to, you know, F FMK, barbecue sauce, mustard, and mayonnaise. And then you have a talk about that. Like, well, I would F mayonnaise because it's creamy. And I would kill ketchup because, you know, tomato sauce is just better. I didn't even say ketchup, but you get the idea. But then sometimes YouTube's easier because on Twitch, if you make a mistake and perform badly, uh, immediately everybody inundates you with, like, what's wrong with your brain? Uh, and it's good because it stops mistakes in their path. But on YouTube, you know, sometimes, uh, to quote The Matrix, ignorance is bliss, you know? Like, maybe I've made a colossal mistake in this video, but I don't have to feel bad about it. Because, you know, it'll just go up on YouTube, and then three days from now, I'll be, like, informed of it. And in a way, that kind of, like, time-delayed uh, sadness is better. <laughs> I like that expression, time-delayed sadness. Anyway, I just love doing it. And I was happy to see that comment because I was like, dude, of course, I don't know. I used to think that every YouTuber would tell you that, like, they loved their job, even if they didn't, because I think pushing a positive attitude is, is marketable. But I don't know. A lot of YouTubers, and I, I can't necessarily say that I disagree with them. Um, or I, I shouldn't say this. I, I can't say, I can say that I disagree with them on my experience, but I can't say I disbelieve them. But they talk about burnout all the time and, you know, the stress of... Being a YouTuber, and there is a unique stress, you know? You, you, it's kind of like being a micro game developer. Like, you go in your box, you record something, it comes out, people go, I love it, and you go, oh, cool. You go in your box, you record something, people go, I hate it, and you go, oh, I don't know why. And then you're like, you know, oh, is everything going to fall apart for me overnight? Um, maybe yes, maybe no, right? But probably not, until one night it does. Uh, but... I don't feel it as much, I guess. I, I don't know how to describe it. I think the very self-serving way to think about it would be like the, well, I don't know, these people have never worked a day in their lives. They don't know what it's like. And I don't think that's fair, you know? A lot of the people who are suffering from like burnout on YouTube are people that are objectively like more successful than I am. You know? That, I mean, I, I'm not trying to say that that means they're, you know, more meritous or whatever, but, you know, I think it speaks to the fact that they're a, a, a 
genuine source, like a source that you can trust. Like, what what good does it do someone like Jacksepticeye if they're like, oh, I'm suffering from burnout right now? Like, I guess they get some sympathy from their fans, but I, the only you have to assume like the Occam's Razor in this case is that they're like, you know, I uh, actually am. Like, I'm just telling the truth, and I, I felt like an obligation to get it out there. I don't know. It's it's weird. It's weird to me. It, well, it's, I, I feel like I'm an aberration, I guess. I do, especially like as I get closer to a, like I know I'm going to be away for like four days for TwitchCon at the end of October. We're doing a personal trip in November as well. Uh, as we get closer to those, like for the final three or four days before those things happen, I know I'm going to be like going stir crazy. Like I got to get out of this office. But then after like a week of being away, Eh, even less. Usually after like a couple of days of being away, I'm like, man, I gotta get back. I miss my office where I talk to myself over and over. It's very strange. I don't, I guess I don't feel the same burnout. That being said, you know, I'll, I'll be intellectually honest with you and with myself. One of the reasons that I create so much content and, you know, I still make a lot of YouTube videos. Maybe not as many as I did at some points, but I've, I'm probably producing as much content now. Probably even more than I have done at any point in my YouTube career. Well, YouTube and Twitch, I should say. Um, part of the reason I do it is because I am kind of worried that, you know, if I stop, I'll realize... This is very self-serving, but hear me out here, okay? As long as we're doing real talk. I do kind of think, like, maybe I've just trained myself to do this much, and if I stop doing it for, like, a month, I'll realize, like, whoa, holy crap, that's a lot. Like, I can't get back to doing that. And it'll all fall apart. It's kind of like jogging. Like if you've ever if you've ever run uh, middle distance or long distance, uh, you know when you're in the rhythm, it feels good. You're like, can I go another two kilometers? Yeah, I can go another two kilometers. You're just in the groove, you know. You breathe on the right stroke. Who who who? Exhale on the left stroke. Who who? Breathe on the right stroke. Who who who? Exhale on the left stroke. Who who? You get the idea, right? You're stuck in that rhythm. It's like a it's like a pendulum, or like a Newton's cradle, or something like that. But if somebody was to, like, stop you, and be like, hey, Excuse me, can you help me? And you had to stop running, you might be like, I can't get started again. Like, it, it's, I've already started, my brain started, like, the recovery period, or something. It's why you always see people jogging in spot when they're at a stoplight, you know? Not just to keep exercising, and not take unnecessary breaks, but because, you know, once you stop, it's hard to start again. That is not... Oh, we missed the deal, or we missed Boss Rush. Anyway. Tech point five, Yo, such a good item. I'm a happy man. For now, though, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed the episode. We'll be moving on, because I'm a sucker, like I said. Freaked up in the head, not. In our next episode, we'll be doing the Family Man and the Purist Challenge. I know I said I'd mix it up. Challenges, greed, challenges, greed. I I'd really like to at least mainline these first 20. Or at least the ones that we didn't fail first. Uh, and then come back and, and do some greedier runs. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. Obviously, great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. And follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Northern Line. If you're wondering where some extra content is, twitch.tv slash Northern Line. Be notified when I go live in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time. See ya!